Okay, so here we are again, and this time we're starting with Unit 2, and we're going to learn everything about water. So hopefully when you're thinking about water now, you're going to start thinking about bonding, that it's a covalently bonded polar molecule, hydrogen bonds, and all those kinds of things. That is the key information that we've got to keep in mind when we start talking about water and its properties. Okay, so let's get started. So there's a number of properties from water that make it a very unique substance on our planet. If you think about it, water is the only substance that occurs in on Earth that occurs in all three states. We have water vapor in our atmosphere and in our clouds. We have liquid water in our rivers and oceans. And then we have solid water in the polar ice caps, snow and things like that. So it's particularly unique in this way. There's no other substance on Earth that exists at our temperature and things like that in all three states okay um, and there's a number of things about those states and the way that water works throughout our ecosystems and our bodies that make it particularly useful and is one of the things that we consider essential for life so without water on our planet life would never have evolved so the things that we're going to look at in terms of water and its properties that we need to be able to explain and to be able to um, relate back to its bonding are the high surface tension and cohesion, the high heat capacity for, of water, providing which provides a heat transfer system for living cells and living organisms. Okay, the high latent heat values. Okay, so this is hidden heat, and we'll talk about that a lot in the coming videos. The fact that it expands on freezing, which provides an insulation. So in a lot of frozen lakes and rivers or icebergs and things like that, the, because the frozen water is less dense, it floats to the top, providing a thick cap, and the water underneath stays liquid, insulating aquatic or organisms and the environment underneath it. It's a good solvent, okay, remembering that like dissolves like, so water being polar is a really good solvent and transport system for nutrients and soluble waste in our body as well as des delivering um, these systems along our river systems and nutrients into plants and things as well it's a reactant in a number of chemical reactions including photosynthesis and other critical reactions so we're going to look at some of these in detail um, and then the rest you will see in more detail provided in your textbook so with water, there's a number of things that we need to remember from bonding, okay? So we need to remember it is a covalent molecule with the compound H2O, okay? It is a polar V-shaped, okay? You can also refer to it as being bent, but it is definitely that V-shaped bent molecule that we looked at with Vespa. And that the forces between the molecules are hydrogen bonds, okay? So the covalent intra molecular bonds okay so these are polar covalent bonds okay but between molecules we have hydrogen bonds so these ones here this oxygen hydrogen covalent bond okay and then we would have hydrogen bonds between molecules this sets it up to have a permanent dipole in each of the bonds with an overall dipole through the molecule because it's not symmetrical and we can see that on this charge distribution map here the electron density is being pulled up towards the oxygen and the presence because it's more electronegative and we also have these lone pairs so we need to be able to explain the structure and the bonding in water so when we look at that bonding, one of the critical things that we're going to look at to explain these unique properties is the level of hydrogen bonding in water. Not only does it form hydrogen bonds, but it is able to form a large number of hydrogen bonds for its relative size. Okay, so like all molecules, it has dispersion forces between molecules. It also has hydrogen bonds between molecules. These are the strongest of the intermolecular forces okay and water molecules can form up to four hydrogen bonds per molecule so they can actually form a hydrogen bond for each lone pair on the oxygen and then one for each hydrogen 
Okay, so what we get is this tetrahedral arrangement of water molecules um, when they come in and interact with each other. This is because hydrogen bonding is a little bit more complicated than what you've been led to believe in terms of hydrogen bonding will occur when molecules have a covalent bond between oxygen, nitrogen and fluorine, two hydrogen, okay, but also we have hydrogen bond donor and hydrogen bond acceptor. These criteria provide our hydrogen bond donor, but a hydrogen bond acceptor can be a lone pair. So this is just expanding on that definition a little bit, and you don't need to be able to talk about hydrogen bond donors and acceptors, but this does explain why hydrogen, uh, these hydrogen bonds form four per molecule. Okay, one for each lone pair, and one for each hydrogen um, that, that is bonded to the oxygen. So this high proportion of hydrogen bonds, okay, for each small mole water molecule is what we're going to come back to again and again for explaining the properties. First one that we're going to look at is the relatively high melting and boiling temperatures of water compared to other molecules of a sim similar size. Okay, so water has a high boiling point of 100 degrees C or a melting point at zero degrees C. And most molecules of a similar size to water are actually gases at room temperature. And if you have a look here, we can see that all of these molecules here will be a gas below zero degrees, so their boiling point is below zero. Ammonia, hydrogen fluoride, and then water have increasing um, boiling points. Now HF, is not going to be able to form as many hydrogen bonds per molecule as water can, and same with ammonia, okay? So this is the relative number of hydrogen bonds that water can form for such a small molecule, okay? So when compared to other similar compounds within the same kinds of groups, or group 16, we see a much higher boiling point for water than we do for things of similar size, and this is explained due to the high proportion of hydrogen bonds per molecule in the substance. So this comes back to understanding that all elements in a group will share similar forms of chemistry. So all the group 16 elements, remembering that oxygen is in group 16, form hydrides which are compounds with hydrogen. Okay, so the hydride of oxygen is water. Okay, so as the molar mass increases, the dispersion forces between molecules increase. So as we go down a group, we would see increasing dispersion forces, which means that we would have increasing boiling point and melting point just because of those that increasing molar mass um, and increasing size. But we see water with a much higher one, and this is due to the hydrogen bonding. So this is our group 16, looking at oxygen's group in particular and the hydrides. And here we have um, sulfur, selenium, and tellurium, and we can see that waters is much higher. Typically, if we were to follow this trend, we would expect waters to be down here. Okay, these are polar molecules. Okay, these are all polar. So they will have dipole-dipole um, forces present but they will also have dispersion forces present. And it's the increasing dispersion forces that we expect to see an increasing trend in boiling point. Okay, but water stands out as an exception being exceptionally high because of those hydrogen bonds. Okay, so this is making them, the, both the melting point and the boiling point are higher than molecules of a similar size. The next property that we're going to talk about, so that explains the high melting point and boiling point of water. The next property we're going to talk about is high cohesion and adhesion. So cohesion is where water is attracted to water molecules. So this is how water sticks to itself, whereas adhesion is how water sticks to other things. Okay, And water has both a co high cohesion and a high adhesion. Again, because of the hydrogen bonds between molecules, this is going to give us cohesion. But if the substance is polar or charged, 
or the surface is polar or charged, you will get interactions between the surface and water molecules, which is adhesion. And we can see this in capillary action. Okay, so you may have seen capillary action in straws or um, the way water gets sucked up a piece of paper or the way that plants can suck water up in through their root system and thing up along the stem or when you've got flowers. Even when they're cut, they can draw water up through their stem. This is due to capillary action. Okay, so the meniscus pulls down here because of the attraction, the cohesion forces attracting water molecules to each other, so they're being pulled together. But on the sides, it pulls up because it's being pulled up the surface or up the tube due to adhesion. Okay, the forces of adhesion. So the water sticking to the glass pulls it up and then the pulling down of the meniscus in water that you may have seen using a measuring cylinder occurs because of the high cohesion and the water molecules pulling back into each other. So high cohesion and high adhesion. This leads us to our next property, which is that water has a high surface tension. Okay, so high surface tension explains why if you jump into a pool um, and do a belly flop, you will get that sting because the flat surface hits the water and the water pushes back. Okay, or if you slap down on water really hard with a flat hand, um, it hurts, okay, because water is actually has quite an amount of force that it will push back due to its high surface tension. It's also why water skimmers and things like that are able to actually walk along the surface of the water and why you can often float things like paper clips or things that are more dense than water on the surface of water if you lay them there very carefully. Okay, so this surface tension is because of the cohesive forces presence in water. So water at the surface will be more attracted to the water molecules below it than the air forming this tight surface. They will have more attraction between each water molecule along the surface than to the air. And then all the water molecules within the droplet also are attracted to each other. Okay, this also explains why water tends to form droplets because all the water molecules are being pulled in towards each other, forming that smallest sort of tightest volume, which is a drop or a sphere. And it's also why water tends to fall as droplets um, with rain. It pulls together because of those high cohesive forces, which gives it a strong surface tension. Of course, these high cohesive forces come about because of the high levels of hydrogen bonding between the water molecules. So one of the things that we talked about that's very important and you may have experienced if you put your drink bottle a bit too full into the freezer and this happens where it explodes out the top is that water expands on freezing. So the structure of ice shows an open hexagonal structure, okay, due to water arranging itself so that it can form the maximum four hydrogen bonds um, with each other water molecule. So Water, uh, liquid water has about 4.4 nearest neighbors on average because they keep breaking and making bonds and moving and tumbling over each other. Okay, but solid water will arrange itself to have that tetrahedral shape around each water molecule, giving us a wide open lattice. Okay, so these gaps between the water molecules in here lower its density. Okay, because if we remember, density is a measure of mass per volume. So if I have fewer molecules in, the, in a given volume, then it will be less dense. Okay, and that's going to happen because there's more space between molecules. Okay, so, and this is why we see that water expanding. There's more space between molecules because it forms stable hydrogen bonds and forms a stable lattice as it turns into a solid. This is another um, picture showing that where you can see the hexagonal, hexagonal arrangement a lot more, giving it a lot more open space than in a liquid where water molecules are closer to each other and um, tumbling over each other all the time with more a greater amount of kinetic energy.
So because this happens, as the substance cools, the particles become closer together initially when the water becomes cool. So cool water is dense. But then as they slow down, these intermolecular forces form in a more regular nature. Okay, so that causes it to form that less dense structure, causing solid ice to float on top of the surface. Okay, that is each of the properties that we need to talk about. This content is covered in page 292 to 295 of your textbook. So you want to summarize each of the properties um, and annotate that with particular information regarding the bonding okay and make sure you've got definitions remembering that the glossary in your book provides de definitions for any of the words that are bold type in your textbook then you have the textbook questions question one to five on page 296 to complete good luck and i'll see you in class next week